Brooklyn Independent Television. Hi everyone, and welcome to Brooklyn Review. I'm Brian Vines. They've been a part of Brooklyn's community for over a hundred years. But in 2004, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, more commonly known as the Jehovah's Witnesses, began moving some of their operations out of the borough. And while some of their properties have been sold off, the economic downturn has caused the organization to put many of the sales on hold. Sherry Carabin takes a look at the role the Witnesses have played in helping to develop real estate in downtown Brooklyn and how their future plans could impact the borough. The challenge for any real estate development of any kind in Brooklyn Heights is there's just a limit to the amount of available parcels. What this represents is an opportunity for developers to look at parcels that ordinarily would just not hit the market. Longtime realtor Michael Guerra is talking about the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society's sale of some of its properties in downtown Brooklyn. The executive vice president at Prudential Douglas Elliman is director of sales in Brooklyn. The Watchtower people have owned hundreds of thousands of square feet of space spread out throughout predominantly Dumbo and Brooklyn Heights. Um, they were buying property in Dumbo when the only other buyer was Mr. Walentis. It was not a neighborhood that was desirable at that time, and obviously they've done really well with their holdings over time. The witnesses first moved to Brooklyn Heights in 1909 from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania making it their world headquarters. Brooklyn was an ideal location. It was a very well-known city. Um, it was right near the center of the East Coast publishing industry, which was very important. It was also a perfect place for international shipping and uh, international travel. And uh, for all those reasons, it was just an ideal location for us. This is the, uh, a reproduction of the old cover of the Watchtower magazine back in 1896. In 1969, the Jehovah's Witnesses purchased the former Squibb Pharmaceutical Complex at 25 Columbia Heights. Then in 1980, after extensive remodeling, they moved their administrative headquarters to this location, where they remain today. Over the last hundred years, uh, the work of Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide has grown. Really since 1909, when we moved here, till now, there were just a few thousand uh, active witnesses around the world. Now there's over seven million. Uh, during the last hundred years, we've produced and distributed over 135 million Bibles. The Watchtower magazine is now the largest uh, publication of any religious magazine. It's also the most widely translated periodical in the world. What kind of things might be in your magazine? Um, well, the Watchtower magazine uh, is uh, kind of dedicated to spiritual uh, information, basically uh, explaining the Bible from different points of view. But in 2004, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society began decentralizing, moving their main printery for North America and the Caribbean out of Brooklyn and setting up shop in Wallkill, New York. There were some changes in printing technology and the buildings that we were using, the old industrial buildings that we had, could no longer house the large equipment we needed. Starting in 2004, the witnesses also sold 360 Furman Street and several smaller buildings in downtown. In the case of Furman Street, the developer put up residential condominiums at one Brooklyn Bridge Park. A few years later, the former Standish Arms Hotel was also sold. It was turned into luxury rental apartments. Despite the sales, quite a few buildings remain in their hands, including 25 and 30 Columbia Heights, 117 Adams Street, and the Bossard Hotel, which they purchased in 1983 built by Lewis Boston in 1910 and uh, it was a su successful hotel uh, with uh, permanent residents and transients as well. Some of the transients were the Brooklyn Dodgers team. John Manbeck is a former Brooklyn Borough historian. The 1970s were hard times for the city, for the country and uh, by that time Lewis Boston had, had been out of the uh, uh, hotel business. And, uh, but the owners uh, felt they, they had to sell and it became a welfare hotel for a while and then went downhill. Uh, the 1980s, the uh, witnesses felt that they could do something. Uh, they bought the hotel and they really restored it. They did a lot of very interesting work, particularly in the lobby. A deal was underway to sell the Bossard Hotel, but then the economic downturn hit and the plans fell through. 
For now, the hotel is temporarily being used to house ministers attending a training school in Brooklyn. What impact do you feel your organization has had on real estate in Brooklyn? We've uh, restored a number of buildings that were uh, really falling apart during the, the declining years uh, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s here in New York when people were not investing in their properties like they are today. And uh, we feel that's had a positive effect on our neighbors and has stimulated many in this area to uh, feel comfortable with investing in their properties and taking pride in their neighborhood. As for any future sales plans? The Watchtower has the luxury, given their tax status, of taking their time in terms of how they choose to move their real estate portfolio around. We have some land use applications upstate for uh, uh, some construction work, but we don't know how that's going to turn out. So at this moment, we're really not in a position to, to make those kind of final decisions. This is Sherry Carabin reporting for Brooklyn Review. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.